Hi, today we are going to be making a project of matching mittens. We want to show a reflection and symmetry in two cutout mitten shapes. And um, here's a picture of our finished project. You can make uh, all kinds of things and find different materials to make your mittens with. So what are we doing today? Today we will draw two mittens and cut them out of paper. We can put items on top or draw to make colored areas and shapes that match on both mittens. What will we learn? How to make them match using symmetry. This means looking at things that are the same on both sides like we are, like we will see them in a mirror. Think about things that are matching like our hands and butterfly wings and how reflections look in a mirror. What supplies do I need? Plain white paper, scissors, and something to draw and color with. Use anything that you have or want to add, like buttons, stickers, gems, or other small items. What do I need to do? Make two mittens by following the directions in the video and cut them out of paper. Add matching items or artwork on the mittens. What do I turn in? A photo of your finished artwork in Teams in the assignment sections, or send it to your teacher to send it to me. Here are some things I used. I had some stickers and crayons and some paper circles that I had already cut out and some cotton balls that I had lying around from an, uh, the other STEM snowflake project. So uh, yarn is good and we definitely need the paper and the scissors. But anything else that you have, if all you can do is draw, that is totally fine. Use whatever you have. What matters is making the two mittens match. So what is symmetry? We use it a lot in art. We want to have things that look like they're being reflected in a mirror to where you could draw a line down the center. You could draw a line down the center and do a left side and then followed by a right side or a top followed by a bottom or whatever order that you want. When we are doing them, we want whatever we make on the left side to match exactly on the right side, but in a reflection. Here's an example with shapes, and you can see that line might really be there or it could be just imaginary. And you can see the shapes that are the same, uh, the hexagon, the square, and the circle. But then the triangle points out in the two different directions, kind of like our hands would. Our hands are also reflections of each other. So we want to have that on both sides of our mittens. Here's a butterfly with the line going down the center. And we want to see the antenna on both sides and the shape of the body repeated and all those little dots should be the same uh, we're just doing them in the opposite order so if we make a move to the left on one side we make a move to the right on the other and try to make it the same motion in the other directions uh, not always easy to do um, here's one with some shapes this would be an activity where you can say okay i want to make the shapes the same on the left and the right and you would fill in the colors of the shapes so that they would match the left wing. I'm looking at how my blue triangle is on the tip of the wing. They're furthest away from the center of the body. And that's sort of what we want to do when we set our mittens up for this project and make those reflections. Here's another project that would be given out for somebody to trace over the lines and make those gray more solid lines. Um, and when you would trace over it, draw on top, you would want to have everything that's on the left match what's on the right in the same place. So his hands need to be outstretched, his feet need to be pointing outward in the two different directions when we look at it. We use these in art all the time. Um, symmetry can come up in lots of different ways and we want to get used to it so that if we were going to do something this advanced someday, we would understand what we need to do. We would think about it, what would it look like if we put a mirror right on that line and we saw a copy of it, it's just facing the other direction. So the first thing I want to do is take my paper and fold it 
from the shorter side here to the shorter side here. So you want to look at your paper and there's two long sides and two short sides. If your paper's like this, that's fine. You're looking for the sides that are definitely shorter. So it's here and here. It doesn't matter which direction your paper is in. You're just going, you're going to take the shorter side and flip it to the other shorter side. So it doesn't matter which way your paper is facing. You just want to go ahead and put the shorter sides together. And just press that down, smash the area so that you have two sides. And it's okay if your fold isn't perfect because we're going to cut the mittens out. And yes, you do need to cut for this project. So to draw the mitten, I only need to draw one. So it doesn't matter what color I use. I'm going to just go ahead and use this brown crayon here just because it's right here. And to draw the mitten, I just want to look at my hand. But I don't need it to be as big as my hand. I can make it bigger than my hand. I can use up as much of the paper as I want. But what a mitten looks like, your fingers are put together, but there's a separate place for your thumb. So you can trace your hand if you want. I think I might do it sort of like that. But all I have to do is go around my fingers. So I can go sort of around my hand and just imagine that that fabric's over my fingers. Then I'll do the same thing for my thumb. And then I'm just going to draw the two ends uh, together. I'm going to make it a little bit longer at the bottom. All right. So let me show you that one more time. Whatever way your paper is facing, you find your short ends, and you're going to put those two together. So you're just going to take short end, touch it to the other short end and smash it down and you just want to decide what your hand would look like so i can draw it um i don't need to put my hand down if i don't feel like it i can go ahead and draw just a nice curve where i think fingers would be and then the thumb and i'll make it a little bit longer than that to cut out so you need to hold your two pieces together and you need to cut on your crayon line carefully. And we're doing this to practice also, I don't have to cut perfectly. What I want to make sure I can do is cut in the corner. We have to practice that. So um, what I'm seeing a lot is sort of kids doing this. Let's not do that. Let me show you how to get in there and get that corner. So I want to come in here and just go ahead and go with my corner and not have my scissors open all the way. I just want to have my hand and cut at the tip. And then I'll go ahead and cut around and come in from the edge to get to your line. It doesn't have to be perfectly along the line. Just sort of getting in there. And then when I come back around, I'll put on this side. Now, if I keep going in this direction, I can get into that corner and not go around it and make it look good. So I'm going to bring my point of my scissors from this direction. Okay. So instead of doing that sort of goofy thing where people sort of go around and they are, seem to be afraid of the corners, we want to go ahead and cut those. Let's do it on this one and I'll show you another way. Just going to go around and I'll go ahead and skip that corner for now. So I keep seeing people that just do not want to do this. I guess it's scary or they don't want to try it or they're afraid of cutting their paper. So they go like this and they go around. We've got to practice that. We've got projects coming up where we're going to need to cut out shapes that have those little corners. So we want to have those. Oof. Cuts there are not that great. I'm just going to come in there. And it's okay if it's not perfect. That's okay if I'm not drawing them along the lines and cutting them perfectly. Okay, what we, all we want to do is get the scraps out of the way. So we want to get in here and I want to just line up the tip of my scissors where I want the line to end. And I'm just going to cut. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And line my tip of my scissors up and cut. 
So I'll just use my bigger mitten cutouts here for the video. What I want to do is allow them, put them both down. Now I have two papers. I want to take one and flip it over just like my hands. So that it looks like the thumbs are next to each other. And what we want to do is start putting objects down that are going to be a mirror like our hands are. So you can think of it like butterfly wings. What's on the left is on the right. Okay, and whatever I do on the right, I want to do on the left in the same places like it's a mirror. We call that symmetrical. So we want to do the same thing with our mittens. Whatever I want to do on the thumb on here, I want to do on the thumb on here. And then on these long edges, same thing. If I do it on this side, I want to make sure I do it on this side because it would match up. That doesn't have to be perfect. We're practicing. But if it doesn't match, and it's not, um, it, it's not the same on both sides, it's not symmetrical. We're going for symmetry on this project to where whatever we see on one side, we see on the other. And um, I can do the same thing with my smaller ones here. I take it, there's my crayon line that I drew. I'll just open it up and put the thumbs together and it kind of looks like a heart. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those uh, symmetrical with the different things that I'm going to put on them. I'll just use the big ones here for um, one example. And then the little ones, let's put them over here because it doesn't matter which way I lie them down on the table to do my work. They could be down sideways. Whatever I want to do on one side, I just want to try to make it match like a mirror on the other, just like our hands. Okay, this is a little bit better. So I just moved my mittens around. I have a little sheet of stickers here. It's okay if you don't have stickers. This is just an example of how we want to put things that are symmetrical. So I want to pick two. Since they come in different colors, I want to pick two that match. I'm going to pick these two right here. And I'll put one on the top of the thumb of my big mitten, which means I want to put it on the top of the thumb of my other big mitten. And let's do the same thing over here. We'll pick another couple of let's do green over here. So if I put one at the top of my mitten where my pointy finger would be, my pointy finger on this side would be here. So I want to put it there where it will match. And these are not going to be perfect. They don't have to be. Um, it's just an example. Let me do one that's bigger now that I've sort of got started. So here's one that could go over where, like say my pinky finger is, put it right here. I want to put it on the same place where this one's pinky finger is. Right about here. And so I want to do that when I add things. Now you can add items. You could put gems or stickers or anything else that you have that might match. I have some pony beads. Those would be terrific. So if I'm going to put one in my bottom corner by my hand away from my thumb, I would want to put a matching one in the same place. So it's not an easy thing to do to get it to match perfectly, especially if you draw. But it's, uh, if that's what you have, don't be afraid of doing this and making a mistake. We've got to try these different things out. So in the middle of my mitten here, on my big one, I think I'll draw sort of a swirly shape. All right. So I'm going to draw that same swirly shape right here. I see where those points are on that side. The point that I cut with my scissors, I'm going to put it right under here. And it's okay if it's in the same direction, it's in the same place. That's what matters. Let's do the same thing. Let's do something very different on this one. I like purple a lot. So maybe I want to make part of my mitten purple. I can go ahead and, oops, my beads are not glued down on my gems. So I'm going to move those out of the way. So maybe I want to make part of my mitten purple. I want to go ahead and draw. I'm going to decide where I want it first. I'm going to go from my corner point on this mitten down to here at the end where it started to go across. All right, and I want to find those same places on my other mitten. 
I'm going to find that pointy part and go down to this corner. So you want to definitely do that to start with. So maybe you want to color these in purple or something like that. You can color your whole mitten in if you just have white paper. You don't have construction paper. Most people don't have construction paper at home. And if you have construction paper and you wanted to do like a red mitten or something, your crayons may not want to show up that great on your finished mittens after you cut them out. That's okay. So this thumb is purple. I'm going to go ahead and make this thumb purple. So I think I'll try another color. And let's try some green. I love green. So if I'm going to do something green, let's try it in a different direction. If I create a pattern on here or shapes, I just want to try to make it look the same that if I folded them up together, it would be about the same on each side. So since we're just doing this part with crayons, I'm not going to worry about did I get it just right. I'm going to go all the way across here from my pointy part across my mitten and just make a nice big green area, nice big green rectangle space. All right, and I want to do the same thing over here, but I got to remember what I did. So I want to go across and I didn't go down this, I went up, so I want to go up on this one too. So I can fill those in with some color. So depending on what you have, you can uh, glue items to it. Let's try some more stickers. Um, I have some different colored ones. And so if I'm going to pick a pink one, I need to pick two, not just one. And I don't want to copy pink to another color. So if I'm going to put a pink one, let's say I'm going to put it under my orange one. I'm going to put it close to the bottom on that side. i got to remember the orange is over there, and it's not near the thumbs in the middle. It's on this edge. So I'm going to find the matching edge, like a butterfly wing, and put a circle there. So stickers are terrific if you had them. Let's try a couple more. Um, maybe I'll put one down uh, next to my swirl on the left side over here which means if it's on the left over here, it's going to be on the right over here. And all I have to do is take a look at my mitten and say, okay, I've got a swirl, I've got a pink, and I've got an orange sticker. And my green is pretty close to my pink. So I want to make my green pretty close to my pink. I'm looking for other objects that are already in the mitten that will match. So if you have stickers, that's a wonderful way to do it. Um, you can find anything you like, just like we did for the stem snowflake. Like, um, I might want to use a whole bunch of these colored paper clips that I never use because they love to tear paper. So um, I've always sort of kept them for art projects to give to kids in case they need them, as long as it's not the thin paper that's going to tear. So I don't want to clip my mittens together. It might tear the paper. But if you use thick paper, uh, paper clips would be okay. But it just depends on what you have. So I'll put a star here. And I want to get the same star over here. And if I don't have stickers, I can just draw it. And I'll keep drawing things that I like on here. I can do color areas like this one. Or I can draw some stars. I'm going to draw a star underneath my orange circle somewhere. Okay, in between my orange and green. So I think I'll draw a nice little star there, up and down. And then I want to go across and attach and attach. I'm going to do the same thing over here, up and down, across, and attach and attach. And then maybe I'll do a nice heart. And um, a lot of kids say to me they can't do something that hard. They say, oh, a, a, heart, a heart is really, really hard to do. It doesn't have to be. You've got a point like this in the bottom. That you can sort of think of it like the mittens. See how the mittens kind of make a heart? So let's sort of do that same shape without the thumbs. I'm going to make a heart here in the bottom. I'm going to do a mitten without a thumb over here. 
throw that in with some color. And then I want to pretend that side of, this was this side of the mitten uh, uh, up and down. But now I'm going to pretend that this is the side of another mitten. I'm going to come around and do the same drawing and fill it in with color. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just want to try to put it in the same place on the other mitten. So I can think of it like as a big flat popsicle. So there's one. And I'm going to draw the other one and fill them both in. So I have a nice heart shape. You can draw any shapes that you like. And then if you have them, it's always a lot of fun to add cotton balls to the bottom. When um, you would get mittens, you would get them in uh, with clips on them that attach to your coat, or um, you get them with strings, and you could actually put the whole string in the back of your coat so that um, your mittens would fit through like your hand does, and they'd be hanging by the strings. So I want to go ahead and add, you can put them with some tape, Tape might be easier, or you can glue. And I'll put my string underneath, my two mittens. And then on the ends where my hands would go in the opening of the mitten, I'm going to glue a couple of cotton balls. So there's some there. There's four on the left, so that means I want to put four on the right. And we just want them on the bottom edge. For the opening. So if your hands were very, very cold, we have to imagine being very, very cold. And you'd want to uh, put your hands in your mittens. So if they were super, super cold, this would give you just a little bit of extra protection where your skin went in to the mitten, so just around your wrist. So I'm going to go ahead and glue and tape those on. I'm going to go ahead and show you this part. I'm going to put, I'm going to turn my mittens over, and I'm just going to turn them over the same way I had them when I drew them. And I'm just going to take on my string, my two strings and my two mittens. So I'm going to put one string and make sure that it's past my tape and put my tape at the bottom of the mitten where the hand would go through. And I'll do the same thing over here. If all you have is glue or a glue stick, that's fine. But you might want to do this step before you go any further, if you have wet glue like this, you don't want to turn it back over. You want to let this dry before you flip it over. So if you're using wet glue, that's fine, but you might want to put the glue on, put your strings on, and then let it dry and come back and finish any stuff you want to do on the top. So I've got those. So those have a nice string on them. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I didn't put my cotton balls on yet, but I just want to put my strings on and make sure this time my thumbs are on the outside. And two pieces of tape. Oops, this one. So I'll add my string here on the bottom and take this one on the bottom so that I have strings on my mittens. So if you use our imaginations and think about what it would be like if it were very, very, very cold outside. If you're using liquid glue and you're going to attach cotton balls on the bottom, just go ahead and put it on the mitten first. Now, kids love to go crazy with glue, and I understand that. But if you're using liquid glue, that's all you need. Just want to go ahead and draw a line with it. It might be a little hard to see on the camera, I'm not sure. But um, all I want is just a line going across. And if you are worried about it not being far enough, just use that orange tip to get it to go into the edges. Don't squeeze any more out because we tend to use a lot more glue than we need to. If you're using liquid glue, make sure you twist it closed when you're done. Because if air gets to it and we have forgotten about it, the glue on the inside of the bottle will dry out and you'd have to get a whole new bottle. So I'm going to just line my cotton balls up on the very bottom of my mitten. One, two, three, and four. I'm going to squish them a little bit together so that they look like 
the fluff that my mittens actually had. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on here, that nice little layer of fluff to try to get your hands warm when you put your mittens on. Just really imagine what it would be like if we had snow and ice and really, really, really cold temperatures. You want to have nice warm clothes. All right, so I'm going to leave that alone and let it dry. And then I'll come back and show you my finished mittens. So you can keep working on yours if you want to and um, pause the video if you want, or you can see my finished mittens and then finish yours up. All right, so sort of finishing mine up here, I'm just sort of showing you with placement if I use the silly paper clips that are different colors. Whatever I'm doing on the left, I'm angling it away from the thumb on this mitten. Now I want to look at this mitten and make sure I angle that one away from this thumb. I don't want to copy. I want to make a mirror. And this is not easy. So don't feel bad if you don't get this perfectly right. You don't have to start over. Just do the best that you can. So I did a blue gem in each corner and then I did a purple one above it. And now I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, orange dot sort of in between them under my blue circle. Added a little snowflake in there. And I'm going to put another dot in basically the same place. And so this is just an example. When you're doing yours, you, when you draw something that you like, don't worry about words. Letters would have to be backwards if we did it from one side to another side like that. We don't want to have backwards letters. So don't try to spell things. Just go ahead and do something fun. If I'm going to do, say, a smiley face emoji kind of thing. I'll do uh, a yellow emoji circle up here where the middle of the fingers would be, the second and third fingers. Well, no, I guess it's the middle and the fourth. Okay, so I'd put a nice little circle in there for an emoji. And I want to put it in the same place over here. And it's in between my star and my circle. So I'm just looking at that same place. Do one item at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. If I'm just doing the yellow circles. That's all I want to work on. And I want to get my two yellow circles in. And then I can make my emoji smile. So I can say, uh, I like my little eye curves like we did on the sun project. And then a nice big smiley face. And I'll do the same thing over here. So whatever you like to draw would be good, but this would not be a project where you have to worry about spelling stuff out. If you want to fill yours with color, that's great. Just make sure you show something that's a pattern within that color. So since these are kind of plain, boring white mittens and everybody should have white paper at home, even if it's just notebook paper, go ahead and get those crayons out. Um, they have to be colored in and they do have to be cut out. This is a cutout project not just drawing. So make sure that you, you don't have to have a string to attach them, but make sure that you have two mittens to show me. And um, what you did on the left mitten and the right mitten, that match, even if it is um, um, just like on another piece of notebook paper, that's fine, but you have to cut this out in order to get credit for the directions. Anything extra that you can add, like string and cotton balls. It's just if you have it. And I have some kids that are not coloring their projects because they're saying they don't have crayons, they only have markers. Use what you have. Use whatever you have to finish your project, but it has to be cut out this time. So um, whatever your paper is and whatever you can draw on the left and the right to match. Um, take your time with your project and have a good time with it. Let me know if you have any questions. Send me an email or a message in chat. I can't wait to see what you create.